What I have here is a supply and demand curve that represents, that's a, you could view it as a model for the housing market or the rental market in a given city. This vertical axis right here is the dollars rent in terms of dollars per square foot per month. So if you have a 1,000 square foot apartment and the price were right over here, that means it's being charged, a thousand, the rent for it is $1,000 per month. This axis right here is square feet per month in terms in millions of square feet. So this is 1 million square feet, 2 million square feet, 3 million square feet, and so on. And like we've done in the last few videos when we've been talking about consumer and producer surplus, I want to view the demand curve right over here. I want to view that as a marginal benefit curve. So for this first, the very first few square feet right here, how much benefit is it for the renters, the consumers? Well, it's a huge benefit. For them, it's worth over $4 per square foot. That's not necessarily what they're going to pay for it, but that's what it's worth to them. And I'm going to view these, this supply curve as a marginal cost curve, or the opportunity cost of producing that extra incremental unit. So right down here, when we have very few square feet, maybe the land is cheap or all the cheapest land is available, you just start, or the, the land that's most suitable for building. And so the cost, the opportunity cost for the suppliers of that those first few square feet are very low. And so it makes sense that they will supply it, because they'll produce it, their cost of producing it is very low. The benefit to the consumers is very high. So if the price, if the price is anywhere between these two things, the consumer will get some surplus. So if the price is, let's say, there, the, this consumer will get some surplus, and the producer will get some surplus right over there. And so the market as a whole will be getting a ton of surplus, depending on how it is divided. Now, we haven't talked about where that price is just yet, although I think you see where this is going. So the producers will keep producing more and more units as long as the marginal benefit is higher than the marginal cost. There is this surplus there that can be divvied up between the consumers and, and the suppliers, depending on where the price is. Marginal benefit higher than marginal cost. Marginal benefit higher than marginal cost all the way up to that point, all the way until we get to all the way until we get to 3 million square feet per month. After that, it doesn't make sense. If so, there's some builder that says, hey, let me add some more square feet to the market, this is what it costs him. It's going to cost him over $3. It's like, well, people aren't even going to get $3 of benefit from those incremental square feet, so no one's going to get it. So there's no reason for anyone to build beyond that point. And so that's why this ends up being the equilibrium quantity. And the price at which that happens, the price at which that happens, and I rig this so we get nice clean numbers, is $3 per square foot per month. Now, $3 per square foot per month is a pretty pricey rent. If you have a 1,000 square foot apartment, and 1,000 square foot, that's my old apartment, that's like a two bedroom, two bath apartment, that's roughly a $3,000 a month for that apartment. So that's pretty pricey. This is the type of rent that you would see in some place like San Francisco. And let's say that the, 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 the mayor does not like this. This is unaffordable. People aren't able to live in, in our city. And so they, they, they institute rent control rent control, which is essentially a price ceiling. They say that the rent per square foot cannot be above a certain amount. That's not normally how rent control is instituted, but just for the sake of our model, let's view it that way. Normally, they say you can't increase rent beyond a certain amount. But let's say that they say rent control. They essentially put a price ceiling on what rent can be charged. So they put a price ceiling, a price ceiling, or a rent ceiling, a price ceiling at $2 per square foot per month. $2 per square foot square foot per month. So let's think about what's going to happen. And also let's think about what's happening to the total surplus, the producer and the consumer surplus. So before, well actually before we even think about the rent control, let's think about what the total surplus is. You had the consumer surplus. So if this is the price right over here, you had a consumer surplus of this area right over here. And I don't know if this if this right over here, let's call this 4.5. If this is 4.5, then this side of the triangle right over here is going to be 1.5. That is 1.5. And then this right over here is 3 million. 3 times 1.5 is 4.5. 4.5 million. And then you divide by 2. That, if you just multiply these, you get the area of the whole rectangle. You divide by 2, you get 2.25 million. Is that right? Yes, 1.5 or times 1 half of 3. That gives you 2.25 million, million dollars. 
So in the equilibrium, if you just let the market be before the rent control, at this equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity, the consumer surplus is $2.25 million. That's how much more benefit the consumers are getting collectively versus what they have to pay for living in, that, living in those houses. And then the producer surplus, the producer surplus is this entire area right over here. And if we assume, let's say that this right over here, I know it doesn't look like it, but to make the math easy, let's say that that is 50 cents. Let's say that is 50 cents. So this whole side right over here is going to be $2.50. So this is going to be 2.5 right over here. This length right over here is still 3. So it's going to be 2.5 times 3 times a half. 2.5 times 3 would give you the area of the whole rectangle. You have to multiply by half to get the area of that triangle. So 2 times 3, so let me just write this down. So it's 2.5 times 3 is, that is 7.5. 25 times 3 is 75. And then 75, 75 divided by 2, 75 divided by 2 gets you what? It's 37, 37.5. So this is going to be 3.7, 3.75. So this, the producer surplus is 3.7. 3.75, and since this is in millions, it's $3.75 million. And so that's the total value that the producers are getting above and beyond their costs of production. And so the total surplus, the total benefit that the market as a whole, if you add the consumers and the producers, is 2.25 plus 3.75. So that gets us to what? That gets us to $6 million of total surplus. So there are $6 million. Six million total, total surplus. So that's good because it's a, we're at an efficient price, efficient clear, uh, equilibrium price and uh, production. We're able to produce all this total surplus. Now let's go back to the rent control situation. We're instituting instituting a price ceiling of two dollars per square foot. So the price is by government mandate being set at two dollars per square foot. $2 per square foot, right over there. Now, if the price is set for $2 per square foot, what is the quantity going to be? How much rent is going to be supplied? If they can only get $2 per square foot, maybe some of the landlords say, no, I'll just break down this wall and expand my own apartment. Or I'm not going to rent these out as much. Or maybe people who are renting out spare bedrooms say, oh, I'm not going to rent out those spare bedrooms anymore. I'm just going to keep them as a guest room. So the total quantity goes down. The total quantity goes down to 2 million square feet a month. And now this is an interesting situation because at 2 million square feet a month, at 2 million square feet a month, the marginal benefit, the marginal benefit is much higher than the marginal cost. The marginal benefit of an extra unit is over $3. The marginal cost of an extra unit is right around $2. So in a in a in an open market, an efficient market, in an unfettered market, people say, "Oh, I'll just build more units because people are going to get benefit from them and we can have a price in between and we'll both be able to experience some surplus." But now you won't. Even though there's this benefit that's in excess of $3, because the price can't be higher than $2, there's no incentive for any of these people to either uh, build more units or maybe offer the units that they have off up for sale. And actually, maybe we shouldn't talk about building this more long run. But even the units that are there, I won't want to rent my guest room out because I'm like, oh, it's too much of a, you know, I'm not going to get my, I'm not going to get my marginal cost. My marginal cost here is over $2, and all I'm allowed to get is $2, so I don't want to offer that extra unit. So what happens in this situation when the price is set right over here, when the price is set right over here, the consumers who happen to be able to rent at this price, who are able to get these first 2 million square feet per month, they get an even larger for those those at least for those 2 million square feet, their consumer surplus is this thing right over here, is this thing right over there, and the producer surplus unambiguously shrinks. The producer surplus is this stuff right over here. But you see that the total surplus is now smaller than the total surplus was when we had an unfettered market. We no longer are able to access this part right over here of the surplus. So this right over here, you could view this as lost lost benefit to society, benefit above the cost. This is lost surplus. And we call this, in economic terms, we call this right over here the dead weight loss the dead weight 
weight loss. This is benefit to the market that could have gone to either the consumers or the producers that somehow was taken away from this market because this market was made less efficient by this artificial price ceiling right over here. And you can measure the dead weight loss. Once again, it's only it's the area of this triangle right over here. And so if you say, if you say this right over here, so this this length right over here is clearly just one. That's one. And if we say that this height, this height right over here, it looks like it is, this is about one and a half. This is about one and a half. Then the area of this triangle, this white triangle right over here, the dead weight loss, let me write over here, the dead weight loss is going to be equal to one times one point five times one point five times one half. Right? One point one time. 1 times 1.5 is double the area of the triangle. You multiply times 1 half to get the area. So that becomes half times 1.5, which is 0.75. So that gives us a dead lot, but it's 0.75 million. So it's $750,000. So this area right over here is $750,000, which is lost to the market. So now the total surplus is going to be $750,000 less than the $6 million. So because of that rent control, it'll now go down to 5.25 million. I took 750,000 out of this. So it might have benefited the renters who happened to, who are able to get apartments. It won't be benefit the renters who now that they, they're not going to be able to find an apartment. It unambiguously reduced the producer surplus. And it reduced the total surplus, the total amount of benefit that the market as a whole was getting.